Hi y'all. So we are back for our first session in our journals now that we have them all ready to go. Um, you guys, seems a number of you found the same book that I have, which is cool. A lot of you found books you already had, you know, of course, going to the library, going to old bookstores. There's so many places to get books. Um, I've used the dollar store as an example because one, it's, you know, um, a place that readily has them. And, you know, I always like to promote free, thrifted or inexpensive places to get you know quality things for us to do our art and a lot of you guys have told me that you love that about my channel so that was that but of course there's so many places to get them um and of course a lot of you had them on your bookshelf and then just thinking about the titles of book if you found a book title just like for me it was just accidental really here i am um but if not, that, that a lot of this is going to get covered up in so many different ways and that don't even worry about it. If you found a book that like you don't really relate to the title, but the book was perfect otherwise, then, you know, we're going to be decorating the whole thing and, and designing our entire book. So don't worry about that. Don't let that be the thing. So midweek, I had gotten a lot of comments about your books were done. And it is an easy process, right, to go through and get these this thing laid out. So where we're going to start today is I'm going to show you how I'm going to kind of start off with this content page and then we're going to get into some jelly printing. I call it my Mark Rothko style printing. So it'll give you an opportunity during the week just to get a lot of printing done and start building your stash of things that we'll use in working through our, our book pages. So sometimes we'll be jelly printing, sometimes we'll just be collaging, uh, doing accommodation, you know, just from week to week. I'm just going to go intuitively with the process of going through this book. This is actually tissue paper, like, do like dollar store tissue paper. Of course, it can be gotten anywhere. And just also, like I save, like this is from packaging from a gift I got. So just... I save my um, papers if I want to use them, but this is, I think they're like 50 sheets or something in this pack, and I use this for printing on, and I love it. I also coffee and tea stain it, and look at this. It just comes out so beautifully. I love it. So I'm going to start with this first. I don't know what I'm going to do with the first few pages of the book yet. Um, the cover, none of that stuff I know yet, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to leave it as it is. And this is a work in progress. This is generally how I work. I, I kind of work in a circle, kind of organically. I kind of do the things I feel like I want to tend to. And then I circle back around and do something else or when I get an idea. So right now, I don't really know what I want to do with this contents page because I'm going to move forward and do some printing that's going to go on these pages. But I do want to you know, kind of figure this out. So what I'm going to do is put this coffee stain paper down. And I'm going to start with that as just an underlayer um, for probably collaging that I'll end up doing on it. But I'm going to keep the contents, um, that word, I'm going to keep that for right now anyway. So I'm just putting my, my glue stick. I like using the Yoohoo glue stick. It's actually a good glue stick and... Um, I find I've used it a lot over the years and I find that it's it really hangs in there with my books but we're going to use this it's going to be like a layering as well so I um, will be using different glues so right now we're starting with this one but by the time I'm done on these pages I may have layered other uh, like a, a gloss medium over top of it so we're going to do a number of things but by the time we're done with our books they're going to be really good, strong, well constructed um, book structure. So I'm just, this is a great way to kind of get some down. Now we can see the wording through. I'm okay with that right now. Um, I'm probably going to put a little bit of this across the top. Maybe I'll use this piece right here. Let me cut this off. Um, and I just want to glue something down and just start the process. So sometimes when we start, you know, we don't have to have it all completely figured out. Okay, let me 
take this off. Just, you know, these under layers are beautiful ways to, um, to get a page started. So that's why I want to start right off by showing you this technique. I call it my Mark Rothko because it makes really wonderful backgrounds for, for collaging or coming back and doing additional. I'm just kind of putting some glue and I have my glue pay, uh, backing over here. So I'm doing that off camera just, but I was just gluing up the back. Um, cause we're going to jelly print and I just didn't want glue down when we're getting ready to do our printing. So there, that's good. Now you guys know that I have an old world style of working. I like old walls. I like things that look sort of old and deconstructed. And so this book will be no different. It'll be true to my style of working. And so already like in an instant, I feel like just using that coffee and tea stained um, paper. We've already just given that page an old, old look as a foundation um, without really doing much. So I'm going to let that dry because I'll definitely be coming back and doing more on top of this. But we're just kind of getting it going. So um, when you're going to work a page, you may want to do that as a foundation. And then, you know, build up on top of it. There'll be a lot of ways we're going to go about this. So you don't have to make a decision in this moment while you're watching what I'm doing. But this is kind of where I'm going to start. So I'm going to put that aside and um, that'll dry down. I already like it. <laughs> it takes just a little bit. Oh, also hang around to the end of the video because I'll show you um, the gift that I have for everyone. So, yeah. I don't want to forget to do that. So I'm going to put this aside, let that dry. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mark Rothko. Um, I'll put a couple of links in below the video, but he was a contemporary artist, um, really popular 50s, 60s, 70s. But he was a part of the color movement or the colorist school. And he did these gigantic paintings like this one is 39. Well, this is not this one's not gigantic but this is 39 by 26 but a lot he has some that are eight like you know eight feet by ten feet <laughs> crazy but look at this this chocolate brown brown and blue um let me see just to show you guys real quickly this is the cover but i just think this is brilliant this sort of chocolate brown with this purple, a little bit of orange, these gray tones. So I, so I love this, and I started jelly printing just by happenstance, um, creating these sort of beautiful backgrounds. And then they're just, they're so easy to do on the jelly plate, and they're just so beautiful and inspirational that they become a foundation for coming back and doing more printing on top of with stencils, things like that. So you guys get the idea of the style we're going for. Let me get my plate. Um, and so I really started using this style to create backgrounds that I use to put it on as collage foundations um, to come back and do more printing on top of, etc. So we're going to get started. I'm going to work with a number of a stand up here. So I'm like in a good place. I'm going to work with the color shifts, the Arteza, and the Quinacridone Ozo Gold. You guys know I like with Goldens. Um, I'll let you know the colors as I'm going, but I'm just going to kind of move through this process and okay, I pulled everything else out but the white. you got to be kidding me. I'm ready to tape, and I don't have the white. Oh, my goodness. Who knows where it is? It could be among my things elsewhere okay well do i have another white in here uh, sorry about that guys okay so we're not gonna worry about white i must not i'll use the pink because it'll give a light foundation so i'm gonna start off with so we're gonna jump right into this process so like i said we're gonna use tissue paper i've already pre-cut it and this is just tissue paper you use in wrapping I have the white, I have black, and I'll even 
show you. We'll even print some on this coffee stained um, paper. Let me cut this in half. So it's um, when we get to a certain point and see how that goes. Also, I know what I need. I need my glazed um, colors here. I like to use. Um, Hmm. We're going to use Champagne, Martha Stewart, uh, Champagne, and Champagne Gold. Now, the Champagne Gold, she no longer makes. The Champagne, I think you can still get, but there's a number of them that we use. It's just a light glazed color. Um, she st still makes a gold that's also used, so you'll see. But any colors you have, don't worry about that right now. Just whatever you have, their colors just jump in. So I'm going to start off by putting a bit of this pink down. And I like to work two tones. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this color shift blue. And I'm going to give myself, I'm trying to give myself enough space here. I'm trying to keep everything in the camera field. Now my plate already has a little stuff on it. Um, you guys who, who've followed me for a while know I love to work with dirty plate because I start getting my build up the way I like it. And um, I start getting texture. So... You know, you don't put too much on and not too little. It's kind of got a sort of a medium coating on here. And I'm just going to kind of work with all color fields. I'm not going to limit myself right now. I'm just going to have fun. And just pull really beautiful backgrounds that we'll be using. So already, why did you want to fold back like that any other time? Here we are. You guys can see it. They really are lovely. So you can sort of see how you get that striation going and how it just will make a beautiful background print. So I'm going to put this down and we're going to start this process of working and drying. So now I still have some on my brayer. Some of that blue. I'm going to come with the Arteza Pearl Chartreuse. And we, like I said, we don't want a lot because it is tissue paper and we're getting these thin veils that really are going to give us a lot of pop. Um, this is going to be nice. So we really just kind of jump in there, put the shiny side of the paper down if your paper has a shiny side and a dull. I generally put the shiny side down. It doesn't matter if you don't, truthfully, but oh, look at that. Yum. See how we just get these really beautiful veils of color. And you could imagine us using that as a collage backing. Just putting them down. Let them dry out. Um, let's use the color shift in the... Which one is this? This is... Oh my God. Pink flash. I'm looking everywhere but where it's written. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Oh boy. Okay, so we're going to... I'm going to put this pink down. And what I try to do initially, because you can go a lot of different directions with this, but initially I'm going to go with this, this papaya orange in the metallics, Arteza, is I start off with two colors, and I just kind of try to keep two colors in play for a little while, and then I'll introduce a third color. Now, you can do four and five colors. You know, you can have added. I'm not saying not to, but I find that initially when you really work with this technique, if you limit your palette to a couple of colors um, you just really get some dynamic color fields 
sort of overlays and you really can play with colors plus if you don't have too many colors going then when you want to use it in the collage it's kind of easier to mix and match because remember we're using this a lot for collaging so we can tear these up and uh, you know use them in pieces so it kind of makes it a little easier too not to have too much going on and you see what happens here don't you as the plate starts building up oh boy you see how we're starting to get that that blue green in the orange field you know we start getting these other colors well when this when, once these dry i'll show you and you can see them a little better but that's what i like about working like this and working back and forth high and low so i'm gonna go ahead and put this purple down so we'll put a little purple um, let's introduce this chartreuse again. Um, do this up here. And I'm going to come back and use a little bit of the, some gold. Um, I'll show you where we're going to put that. Kind of got a bit on here bit more than what I usually do but let's see I'll pull this first and then come back to the gold so let's try putting a black piece down let's see what we get because these are metallics and these flash paints are so beautiful on black too so it's going to give us a different kind of oh look at that different kind of print but you yummy. Oh my goodness, look at that. See how those colors just really pop with the black background? So we want to use some of these black papers too. So what's cool is is just to do like some printing sessions. I'm gonna come back with this. And uh kind of had some spilling off the side there, so I'm going to cover this plate and then I'm going to get this gold, which is just our Teza gold. I'll put some of this down, kind of right there, just to get some contrast in going there. And uh, we'll get our white. And so the idea is just to play, make a lot of backgrounds. I mean, you know, I make a lot of these because you use them and they just are so beautiful to work with in collaging. So this one, oh yeah, see the variation from the, um, for some, for the purple at the bottom that was on the plate. And then we did the gold overlay up to the chartreuse. So you'll see it better when it dries. It's kind of hard to appreciate the colors. Mm, that's gorgeous. When they're metallics and we already have a light shining. Okay, so I'm going to come with the black. Because I love the contrast of the black. Also, the color shift. Do I have the sh color shift in the... Um, over here in the black in the dark I don't see it I, so I definitely do just I have I know I've been using some metallics but we can just do um, opaques you know you don't have to be all metallic I kind of play around with different colorations I know I have the the Blick Celadon, which guys, a lot of guys, you guys that follow me know I love that color. So I'll pull that one out. This is the Dolly Ronnie Ronnie pink. This is Walmart dollar ninety seven a tube. But I love painting with these paints. I use the pink, the pink and the um, the white. And they have what have, they have another color that I do like. Uh, I can't think of it right now. 
They have a lot of colors, but those are the ones I have a tendency towards. Now you can see, look at that, it's gorgeous. So you'll see this will have a high contrast. So here again, it's not too much and it's not too little. It's like right in between. It's not a lot of paint. See, look at that. Dramatic. Okay. So we're doing some more. Just kind of showing you different combinations. So with this black, I'm going to put... Um, uh, let's do some quinacridone. This is always dra drama. Let me just get a cleaner brayer because I don't want that black to mix in. So one that we haven't used. It's really time for me to get some new brayers, but I'm constantly... ordering things and I never remember when I put my orders in to get brayers. I don't know what it is about that. Let's put this down and see what we get. Oh yeah. So here again we have some beautiful contrast and when that dries that's just going to be really yummy. So Try to discipline yourself to, um, you know, just a couple of colors. <laughs> I'm going to come in with this ice blue now. I have that, um, do I want the ice blue? Yes, no, let's use the chartreuse. This should be nice with against this um, quinacridone. And it's also got some of that pink still down there. So we're just going to kind of do this see what we get you see how this goes it's just a lot of fun and it's a real easy way to start for those of you who said you haven't jelly printed before this is a great way to get into it those of you who have jelly printed for quite a, quite a while doing these and then letting them dry and then coming back and printing on top of them with stencils and with other imagery. See, this is what I like to start doing too. I like it when it starts kind of getting that little grunge um, look because that just gives a lot of neat texture um, to our papers. When, as we're building up, I'm gonna come back with this and do this on some of this on, on black. Let me see, I've got, I don't wanna do the orange. Um, let's do the red flash. I love this red flash. Let's do it over this black because it's going to pick up some of the black that's left behind on the plate. I should have some in here. Hopefully it's just have to bang it on the plate. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, I want more than that to come out. Shoot. Do I have more of it? Let me see. Oh, I do. Yay. I even have one that's not open. Look at me. Normally when I have my favorite colors, when I go, you know, run in Michaels or Joann's or somewhere where these are sold, I think they even have these at Walmart. I'll pick up a bottle. Try to keep my stash. <laughs> okay. Let's try doing this on some of the coffee stain paper and see what we get. Wow. Oh yeah. And see how it has that texture because I had this already. Um, oh my God. Look at that. Yeah. See that black is coming through. And then we have this texture. It starts looking like really leathery. When it dries, it's going to be gorgeous. So, um, now I like on the sides, you can see the coffee staining just adds to it. So you can definitely take and crumple your papers. 
and um, paint with them as I've done there. So let's see. Let's get some more of that. Let me see what I can get, pick up with that. So let's use the orange, the color shift in the orange. So get some more of that down there. And I'm going to put the blue flash up here. And I'm going to kind of do, it'll end up sort of being a mixture, you'll see. Kind of want my colors to mix around. I just do that on the plate like that. And then up here, it's, we're gonna, we should kind of get a really interesting blue pink mixture here. See what we have. Got to keep an eye on the time because you know these videos can't get but so long. Oh my goodness, look at that. You wouldn't even think that that would be the color combination. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Wow. See, the more you work and let your plate start building up, Stick into the two colors, you still end up getting so much variety because there's so much stuff on this plate. So like right there, I'm going to pick that up. It's going to be spaces in there. That's okay because it allows me to just get some <clears throat> some paper that's going to have kind of spots and textures. And because as as I said, oh boy, look at that. At that see as our plate starts building up and there's more moisture in it even though I'm still only putting two colors down there's colors that are already still on the plate <clears throat> that are there and then the colors I'm putting down mix up as well so let me put this um, this celadon matte in the um in the blick it's one of my faves i think this is going to pull beautifully i think i'm just going to put this at the bottom let that stay at the top and see what we get it's just all about playing and having fun so oh yeah gosh look at that even when I put my paper down, I didn't get it quite flat, those lines, but that's okay because it's all about backgrounds. But look at how gorgeous these colors are together. Oh boy. Okay. So there, you know, kind of gives you an idea of how I'm suggesting to begin painting. And uh, I feel like I want to, oh, you know what I'll do? Put a little bit more quinacridone down. That's always, let me see if there's anything. No. Um, put a little bit of this down to finish up and then I'm going to show you um, what I have for you guys that will add into these printings this week so next week we'll have a lot of backgrounds to choose from and then we're going to start um, working on those pages and collaging pull it out so that I don't get so many wrinkles. For some reason that piece wants to have these wrinkles in it. Let's make sure I can pull a lot up. Okay. Oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for. This plate is starting to sing and I need to stop. See that? All of that. The black that was on there from earlier. See how it's pulling against that um, the Blick Matte uh, Celadon, and this is the Quinacridone. That's just gorgeous. I mean, you can see, guys, how that just moved the plate out of the way. I kind of took my backing off of it because my backing is so dirty. I didn't want you guys to, for it to look like you couldn't see what the colors were. <laughs> I need to just put, get a piece of acrylic. But see this? That's a lot of texture, and that's why I call it the Mark Rothko style because it's just not putting down a Celadon and a Quinacridone. 
you know that would be kind of flat but as you build up on the plate you start getting a lot of the color variations in here you look at it closely you can see the other colors the reds and that's what brings a lot of depth and, and color and texture to your print so it's just not these two colors that you put down there that's why I don't clean my plate and um, from the very beginning of me showing um, jelly printing if you look at my videos even what six years ago I wasn't cleaning my plate um, I saw a lot of people doing it and when I first started I was trying to clean it. I'm like I, I just can't do it and I because I wanted all this extra texture that I felt like I was always getting rid of so there we have it um, so let me show you move some of this stuff out the way so you guys can see so if you go let me find maybe one of these earlier pieces that is a bit dry somewhat anyway that's that really pretty pink and oh my god look how gorgeous these colors are so what i have for you there's a link beneath the video for a pack of these i told you guys i was doing this design team background projects working with a few other awesome creators Corey a pentagraph with art archaeologist um, Patty Tolley Parrish and Vicki Ross and so we're um, these are a lot of backgrounds that I'm using that I use in my work some of it is my work some of it's ephemera that I've collected some of it is my um, coffee stained papers and a lot of them are done as collage pieces but they can be um, you know the whole idea is just to have a lot of pattern and texture and um, this is one of my pieces one of my flat lays with some of my collectibles I love using here's another one so these are various downloadables I believe the first set there should be nine of them and most of these are in there every month I'll be doing a set but this first this first set is free for you guys for hanging out with me and starting the process and they're not gonna be more than six dollars monthly and I always have the link if you guys want to get them you can go grab them or you know or not just kind of you know use them as inspiration because I'll be using a lot of these in my work there also will be one of these and I took all of the main classical patterns that I love to use and made them in sort of this grid so that for instance like you can have the pattern like as a piece as an element here that's been blown up but also just as a smaller element so it can be something that you can use as a, a element on the page itself um, you know so you have different sizes of things and I also have them as strips so that when you print them out you can use them to make washi tape like the double sided washi tape I show you guys how to use so there's a few different ways that the packs will come so go below the link here and download it it'll take you over to my um, school teachable some of you are already over there and this is a it's a free link so what it'll do is it'll take you over there and it'll come up it'll say it's six dollars and then if you look at it it's gonna say it's free so when you click it it'll just you know take your um, your email address and it sounds like oh thank you for enrolling but you haven't enrolled it's just in my school and I just put a lot of my ebooks and my downloadables over there because I don't do Etsy or anything like that um, I like to try to keep everything on one platform so it'll say that but not to worry it's free it's not gonna take any of your information or even put any credit card or anything in there um, and so yeah so grab these and um, they'll be there and you can actually as you start uh, making all these backgrounds look at these yummies let's see what we have here you'll be able to um oh, i love them you'll be ready for next week because next week we'll do a lot of what i call intuitive collaging i'm just pulling some of these back here they're dried now look at that oh well, they're almost dry look at this gold and black one this is the one i was talking about so when we get this texture like this you want that because that is beautiful to use in collaging and then this is gorgeous too so there we have it we're 34 minutes in so check the link below and run over and grab these um i think i have 500 sets up right now they can be downloaded um so grab yours and let's see make your backgrounds and We'll be ready to work on 
the book next get inside of here and taking some of these backgrounds on our next page and work them and by that time I might decide what I'm going to do here or I might even take like some of the papers and begin to tear them down and start collaging over them as you can see here look at how good that looks already you see like I could take this bit of it and collage it and begin this process of um, because these will all go down as backgrounds and then we're going to build up on them. See how good this is going to look? It's going to look good really quick. Oh, oh boy. Okay, there you have it. So I'm glad so many of you are ready to jump into this project with me and you're as excited as I am. We're going to have a lot of fun and when we're done. You guys are going to have an absolutely fabulous book. Me too. <laughs> because I'm making mine too. So we're going to have a beautiful book and it's going to be a lot of these yummies. So get started with this and uh, everything will build on itself. All right. Love you guys. Thanks a lot for hanging out over here with me and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.